Welcome to Blackthorn Prod and to another AI tutorial with Unity and C Sharp. I'm Noah and today I'll be showing you how to create a simple enemy behavior commonly used in the classic tower defense genre. By the end of the video, you'll have a character that smoothly moves through a set path until he reaches his destination at which point he will simply destroy himself. With that said, let's begin. So as usual, I have a very simple Unity scene set up with a little placeholder enemy and some walls that carve out a path I want my character to move along. To achieve this, I will use a very simple waypoint system. In short, I will create a bunch of empty game objects, place them along the path and my character will move towards the nearest one of these game objects or waypoints. And once he's reached his destination, move on to the next waypoint. Firstly, I'll create a new empty game object, reset its transform and call it waypoints. We will use this empty game object to store all of our waypoints and keep the scene nice and clean. So I'll then create another empty game object Call this one waypoint1, make it a child of the waypoints game object, and also give it a little red gizmo so I can more easily see it in the scene view. I'll now place this empty game object at the end of the first part of my path. I'll then duplicate my waypoint and move it up, duplicate it again, move it right, and repeat that process one more time, placing my last waypoint at the end of the path. So to recap, my character will first move to this waypoint, then to this one, then here, and finish up right here. Sounds great, so let's create a new C-sharp script, call it waypoints, and begin programming. Now this script will be extremely short, I'll simply create a public array of type transform and call it waypoints. As you probably guessed, we will store in this array all the waypoints that we created just a few moments ago. So I'll head back into Unity, drag and drop this script onto my waypoints game object and then lock the inspector. This way I can quickly and easily drag and drop all of my waypoints into the array. I'll then unlock the inspector and make a new C-sharp script, this one called character. We will use this script to get our character moving from one waypoint to another. So first of all, I'll create a public float speed variable. This will of course dictate how fast our character moves. I then need to grab a reference to my waypoint script. So I'll make a private variable of type waypoint that I'll simply call wpoint short for a waypoint. In my start function, I will set this new variable equal to the game object that has a tag called waypoints, and more precisely, the waypoint script component of that object. So let's hop back into Unity, create a new tag called waypoints, and give our waypoints game object the waypoints tag. Now in the update function, I will get my character to move to the first waypoint in my waypoint array. To do so, I'll use the easy peasy move towards function, getting my character to move from his position to the waypoint of index zero's position at a certain speed multiplied by time dot delta time. However, hard coding the index value isn't a great idea in this case. So I'll make another variable, this one private of type int, and call it waypoint index, and replace this fact zero with the waypoint index variable. This way, all I will need to do is increment the value of this int variable to get my character moving to the next waypoint in my waypoints array. I now need a way to detect whether or not that character has reached his destination. So I'll make an if statement and check the distance using vector2.distance between the character's position and the current waypoint he is moving towards position. 
And if that distance is smaller than, say, 0.1, then we'll want our character to move to the next waypoint in our array. To do so, simply increment of 1, as I said earlier, the waypoint index variable. I'll now close mono develop, jump into Unity, type in some value for the character's speed, and hit play. And you'll see that our character moves through the path. Excellent. However, when the character reaches the last waypoint, a nasty red bug will appear. This is because we are incrementing the value of waypoint index, despite the fact that there are no more waypoints in our array. To fix this, I'll simply type in another if statement and check whether or not the waypoint index variable has a value smaller than the amount of elements in our array minus one, because arrays start at zero. If that's the case, then we know our character hasn't finished his journey, and so we will increment our waypoint index variable. However, if that if statement returns false, then we know that our character has reached the last waypoint. For the purpose of this tutorial, I will simply destroy my character. Hitting play, you will now see that my character elegantly destroys himself upon reaching the end of the path. As a bonus, I will now quickly show you how to rotate the character so he faces the waypoint he is moving towards. I'll first of all create a vector3 variable called direction and set it equal to the waypoint's position we are moving towards, minus the character's current position. I'll then make a float variable called angle and set it equal to some line of code that looks utterly alien. And lastly, I'll set the character's rotation equal to quaternion.angleaxis and in the parentheses, state how many angle degrees I wish to rotate and along what axis. I'll type vector3.forwards for the axis because I want my character to rotate along the Z axis, which is the only axis you'll usually want to rotate around in a 2D space. Now note that all this rotation stuff is a little complex and will be the topic for a future video. With that done, I'll hit play and see that my character is now rotating to face the waypoint he is moving towards. Excellent. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any problems, state it in the comment section down below and either I or someone else will help you out. As usual, I thank you so much for watching. Hitting the like and subscribe buttons would be absolutely awesome. You can also join the Blackthorn Pro Discord server and chat with fellow game creators. Also consider following me on Twitter. I'm planning on posting character designs on a daily basis over there, as well as screenshots on my current game projects. With that said, see you very soon. Cheers.